You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Konnichiwa, everybody. Welcome <laughs> back to the Charger <laughs> Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin Duggan. Well, hello, guys. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Let's not forget Kyle, the coach, Duggan. We have a schedule now, boys. We know who we're playing. Boy, do we ever. And primetime games left and right. Come on. Ugh, it's a beautiful it's left thing. Left and right. You yes. I mean? it's yeah. uh, There's a lot happening in this last week, and we cannot wait to talk about it. Uh, we've got lots lined up here, folks. We've got uh, schedules and uh guys on the field throwing balls to each other some new faces out there we've got a bolt beat and an ask bolt fam it's gonna be one of those kind of episodes folks strap in get ready and hold on tight let's start it out here at the top schedule released and did anybody see this coming a twofer we said four dude let's run it back we said four primetime games and they give us the max yeah, well, I'm not even wrong. talking about that. I'm just talking about the, the video. Just seeing <laughs> oh, the, the video. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, we're, we've got superheroes coming in. We've got celebrities making appearances. None of that happened. They were just like, let's run nope. it back, boys. Let's do it yeah. one more. One more time. Let's go back to the anime well. And it was beautiful. And during that anime well, like Kevin was saying, yes, the primetime games were a plentiful to say the least. Uh, six, count them, six primetime games. We're talking two Sundays, two Mondays, a Thursday, and a Saturday. When has that lot, happened? Dude. A third of our dude, schedule like, is in primetime right now. Uh, you know, you have it. to it think was, it was more funny, to see I, it. Who? Justin Herbert. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Primetime Herbo, baby. It, 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 it was funny because I was like so excited for this, but then you get the other side of it where uh, Carl Bolingtoft messaged up between oh, it. He's like, poor guy. This really sucks because he's yeah. got to stay up. It's like balls early in the morning. Oh, for like sure. Six yeah. Games. So you don't think about that. The international fans, you don't think about them, but um, well, I'm thrilled. And that's the other thing, too. We were kind of hoping for some international Chargers news, and that didn't happen either. No Germany or London. We got yeah, Jaguars are, like, hanging out in London for two weeks straight. They're just going to be sitting there. over there yeah. eating fish and chips. So Bitches. I guess good for them. But, uh, yeah, no hey, but international hey, the good thing for is, our... The good thing is the travel. That is an extreme amount of travel. I am dealing yeah. with the jet lag, and I've been in Romania for, like, two weeks now. Like, oh, flying sure, yeah. out there to do that game, like... That's not an advantage. Throws you so, off, yeah, no doubt. Ed, your your clock is messed up. So I I don't think it's. Hey, if this is our Super Bowl run year, let's not throw in any odd weird <laughs> shit to throw us off. You know what I mean? Let's keep it simple. Stupid. Good point. You know what I mean? Keep it simple, stupid. Good point. Yeah, I, I did see. I think the Chargers do even without the international games, they're like fifth in like travel mileage or something like that. So are. just uh, that's a consequence of being on the West Coast. I guess the so. Yeah. Yeah. North too. We're playing all those freaking teams in the yeah. Northeast. So. So it will be that kind of a kind of a schedule, but yeah, folks, uh, the the video dropped, and man, the anime, I love it, dude. Like, here's the thing about the video that I think is so freaking smart. Obviously, yeah. like football and anime doesn't necessarily click, right? It's like lamb and tuna fish. Yeah, like it it just it doesn't <laughs> come together, and yet the charges have found a way by throwing all of these little trolling moments, you know, for every single team. And there, no team does not get at least some minor bit of trolling. And you're bringing in this anime audience of, you know, people. It's a huge fan base. And so now you're bringing in this generation of fans that are like into anime because the Chargers are the only ones that are doing this. I watched like some of the other videos. And did you guys see like trash? Uh, garbage like in in people putting posts like i couldn't even watch my own team's release video because it was so boring it was so I honestly old didn't hat. watch i didn't even see any of them the only other one i saw was the titans and right. they actually did a pretty funny one 
They did a funny yeah. one, but theirs was it was just a rip off of like another like yeah. it was viral video. video. Yeah, right. it was yeah. like here's my mom trying to figure out yeah. the name of football teams, and then they just went to random people in the streets. Yeah. Granted, it was still funny. Yeah, but you, it's just a straight rip. Like, right. I think people there's an element of people like kind of knowing they're not going to be that great, so they just don't put the effort in. Like we clearly they were saying they, this has gone crazy this year because now they're being interviewed on like TV, like local TV. Yeah. Like Jason Levine, the guy in charge of this is being interviewed. And it's like, yeah, we spent three months on this. Yeah. And then I'm hang, I'm hanging out in a room with a Chiefs fan and he, I was like, how was your release video? He was like, this <laughs> not good. Yeah. Like maybe spent uh, two days working on it. So yeah. you can see the difference of like effort involved. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy because it's building a fan base. Now you are bringing people in just from a schedule video. Yeah. Like this isn't yeah. a football game. This isn't, you know, playoffs or the Super Bowl. This is just a schedule video and you're bringing new fans in. And I love that. I love and how they're doing this. Absolutely pissing off all the other. Oh, you're, fan yeah. You're too. just like rubbing just the digs left and right. Yeah. Rubbing every other team's nose in all of their, you know, follies, no matter how small. I mean, you're looking at week one dolphins at home and you're taking what was like a moment of the the miami head coach like look like he might have been vaping on the sideline yeah. and it wasn't but they're adding that into this video to kind of like just dig a little bit and, on, and you know uh, on the dolphins you know what's funny too is like they've established dominance so hard on this style yeah. like even if another team tried to like copy us you could tell they would look like the chargers. total assholes yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, we, they. I honestly think we may become the anime team. Like, I don't see Fine. how you don't do this a third year. Right. This got so much traction, even though everyone was hoping for something new. If it's not broke, don't fix exactly. it. Right. Exactly. They, exactly. They knocked this out of the park. And the amount of like videos online right now of people that aren't Charger fans, like Mike Florio and exactly. like all these different, spending half an hour. 20 minutes going yeah. through this and break like looking at all the Easter eggs. Come on now. That's could not be cooler. It's exactly what I'm saying. Like you're creating something that everybody is talking about now. Pat McAfee is talking about it, not yeah. just because he's in it, you yeah. know, even though he Smart was move. in it. It's great. Smart move, move Chargers. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's the thing. So, I mean, you've got like Skip Bayless and uh, Mina Kimes and uh, uh, Sh Shannon Sharp, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like all of those guys, like they're going to talk about it because like, hey, I'm in this video. Might it. as well talk about it. I've so, been animated. Um, yeah. So week one, Chargers against the Dolphins. Week two against the Titans, which was nicely done with the Teen Titans. And again, just giving a little bit of a jab with the mayo and the half eaten banana sitting in the background for their new quarterback. Was it Will Levis that? Puts mayo oh, in yeah. his coffee. Yeah, gross. Yeah. Yeah. gross. <laughs> I, I missed that one. <laughs> See, I've watched this thing five times and I missed that. Yeah, over on the <laughs> on the left there, you can see there's a jar of mayo and a half-eaten banana behind what I assume oh is god. Derrick Henry there on, the, Henry, on the, the table. Machine. There, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, I didn't even see that. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Now, every Dude, that like there's so much time and effort because they at least know who they're playing. It just becomes right. a matter right. of like, okay, well, what Piecing order do we put together. these things right. in? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Week three, they get the Vikings away again. More jabs up in that top corner there. That was oh. a, that blew my Offensive hair back. Offensive rookie of the year runner, runner up. up. That yeah. blew my hair back. That's that a like, sharp oh dick. Yeah. Here's the God. thing: Chargers Twitter and Chargers fans. <laughs> what the team is established now. Just yeah. get ready because yeah. every week people are going to be talking shit to us. Like you can't come back from some of this stuff. No. Yeah. People that weren't even on our radar are definitely on our radar now. Radar yeah. now. Yeah. So it's what it is. Bring the smoke. I like it. It's And that's the thing is like, we're not saying th it's not this like our quarterbacks better than yours or blah, blah, blah. It's just like, hey, man. This was a topic of conversation, so guess what? <laughs> We're well, letting everybody. You did this to, the Vikings you did this fans got all salty at exactly us with the whole with the, like the voting of everything, and yeah. they were getting so salty at the fact that they thought Justin Jefferson should have been officer of the kid year, but yeah, he wasn't. But and here we are, wrong. Years wrong. Later on, <laughs> reminding you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, week four, we finally get an AFC West opponent. That'll be the Raiders at home at the beginning of October. Family trust, respect. Family trust, respect. Gambling. Which is up in the top of that image, which yeah. is amazing. Get your quarterback. And, <laughs> and it was funny because I think, you know, just as a fan that's been saying this forever, 
I figure everyone knows what it is because, you know, there's right. a lot of intelligent people. Mike Florio and uh, what's no, his name? No the court, the other quarterback. They were walking through it and one of them didn't know what it meant. They're like, oh, that's even better. Like, I don't yeah. know. I guess we're in a little bubble because family trust respect wasn't fully understood by everyone. Yeah, not everybody's on the on the trolley like we are, but uh, yes, they gambled on. And that's the thing. Everybody was talking like, "Oh, is Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or Derek Carr? Is he staying with the with the Raiders?" Is like, nope. You get Garoppolo, my friend. <laughs> Garoppolo. Jackpot. Bing, bing, bing. Um, week five by week. Early. Pretty early bye week, yeah. That's really the early. The earliest yeah. you can get. We got the very first bye week that they that really they okay. Yeah, I don't like that at all. It's not. It's <laughs> but, not great, but it, I mean. Knowing our track record, we'll have a couple guys dinged up, so it's okay. To I was going to say, like, I almost kind of like it being early and maybe going on a bit more of a stretch later on. I, I don't know. It's uh, you could well, find pros and cons to both sides mm -hmm. for sure. And if you go look at the schedule, all these primetime games, there are some benefits, especially you know a couple of those games where you get an extra day, you get an extra two days. We have was it two Thursdays? Granted, they're shorter on the front end, but you got a lot more time on the back end before your next game. So mm -hmm. there's there's a couple little mini buys within the schedule because of us being badass and everyone wanting to see us on primetime. We're go. also home away, home away, home away, home away the whole rest of the season. We don't have back to back, like back to back away games the rest <laughs> of the sucks. year, which is no, which is huge. Like you don't you don't have to travel two weeks in a row. We're always gonna have that week at home it'll be one at home one away one at home one away think of it like that yeah. instead of a lot of times like sometimes you get back to back to back away games where you fly out play Stay there. come home fly out yeah. yeah come home like it's just back like back and forth so this at least no matter what you're gonna get 10 12 days at home in between every away game yeah i love that all right, week six, we get our first primetime game that's going to be against the Cowboys for Monday Night Football. So far, baby. That'll be the Kellen Moore game. See him go up against his former team. We'll see if we'll see how coach the, the oh, what's their, what's his nuts? The coach of the Cowboys. McCarthy. 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 We'll see how he feels about scoring too many points. Um, yeah, because that's gonna that's coming at your face. Well, bitch. that was and that was the anime thing with the content team throwing Dak under the bus. Uh, trying to say that it was his fault that uh, that the that the team lost the way they did. So, is, is Dak Prescott going to be the the quarterback for the team? Is he really going to be as good as they say he is without Kellen Moore calling the plays? Only time, time will tell. Time will tell. All right, Week Seven away at the Chiefs, October twenty second. This dig with so, the oh my so god, good. I couldn't. <laughs> Like, like I, of all the teams to dig, like this is like a, a fun dig because it's not digging at the team or any no, of the players because no. they'll come back at us tenfold. Oh, right? we're going at you. We're going at your criminals. Yeah. We're going yeah, at yeah. your crazy ass fans who attack people <laughs> and get ankle bracelets and uh, are Rob arrested, Banks, so. baby. Yeah. Like <laughs> this we're is going your after fan your base. bank a, robber fan that's base. That's <laughs> such a bizarre. Yeah, that is such a bizarre storyline that I don't feel like has been picked up enough in mainstream because, like, I. Yeah. Yeah. It, you you hear about it on like part of my take and that's pretty much it so far that they had this giant mega fan that was robbing banks to bankroll right. his fandom basically well, he was so at he, every game and everybody's like boy how are you how can you afford all this and he's just like hey you know i got a side hustle or something like that <laughs> wait wait hang on brisket prods do you have anything that you need to confess <laughs> yeah yeah hey we've right. been robbing banks to bankroll that travel as well maybe <laughs> I hope what not. a movie that would be! The broads are are, are oh, robbers because oh, they're like are, so are bank They're robbers? back to back like with point, guns it's like and point stuff. Break. They're like so <laughs> kind and happy yeah. and jolly, but really they're bank robbers. <laughs> Little hand time it says it's time to rock and roll. <laughs> All right, so yeah, week seven Chiefs away game, and then week eight we get the Bears at home prime time Sunday night football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the prime time back to back prime time. We get prime time Sunday night against the Bears, and then week nine we get prime time against the Jets back in New York. That's in New York. Yeah, that's yeah. Back that's to that's going to be that's, fun. That's, you got next. You got an extra day there. That, that's what I'm talking about. We get a little extra days here and there. You go from Sunday mm -hmm. night to Monday night, so it's not bad. I don't hate it. Um, and then week ten we get the Lions at home, and, uh, and they're they went hard. <laughs> 
Dude, yeah. I, I don't want to piss shut off down their... the whole. They shut down the whole release video to dig at the line. Like music <laughs> like, changed everything. Yeah, this is this is the most aggressive one in my opinion on yeah. all of them. And Dan Campbell bites kneecaps and shit. Like if you're gonna take it, I don't know. I just I I like it, but I'm nervous. Like he, this is gonna be on the screen before the game <laughs> Locker, starts yeah. as motivation to fucking get them all fired up. So oh, I yeah. just my prediction is this Lions game. The Lions are gonna come out fast. Because this is going to be on the screen before they go out on the field. Um, we we opened up a can of worms. I'm good for it, but it's fucking open now. It is <laughs> funny because yeah, he basically I, I saw the interview and he was just like, yeah, we just copied the the rule and pasted it for for that segment. Like they didn't add anything extra. It was like we just copied and pasted it <laughs> in. Just a you know friendly reminder for all the you know the Lions players that uh, aren't going to be playing because of the whole gambling thing, but. Um, that's so yeah. We get the it's lines so at home. simple, but so such good. a burn. Yes, uh, week eleven we get the Packers away, and they did the whole Aaron Rodgers doing his whole dark Black, room therapy. Dark room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's what that was. I didn't even pick that up. Yeah, I think online? this must have been made before. Be a lot of digs. Yeah, this because had to be made too before Rodgers went to the Jets. So, yeah. oh, to do uh, list another McAfee interview yeah. tweet, vul- vague tweet vaguely. Do my own research. <laughs> schedule yeah. uh, ayahuasca. Schedule ayahuasca appointment. Yeah, yeah that's this is Aaron <laughs> Rodgers because the whole Jets thing that was done like less than a month ago, and they started working yeah. on this thing three months ago. So they were like, well, we can't change it now. It's just let it fly. Game on. It's happening. So um, week 12, we get the Ravens at home. Prime time again, Sunday night football. Love to see it. That'll be an exciting game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, week 13, we get the Patriots away. <laughs> this is this was a really fun one. I like this so much because the burn of him, like them, you know, having practice video of other teams. Yes, and and he Belichick Belichick sitting there in front of every team while yes. he has a screen. Such a sick burn. <laughs> it's so good, and still referencing an anime at the same time. I think this is from uh, an anime called My or Full Metal Alchemist. So. I mean, yeah, it, okay. that, that's what's so great about this is you as a non-anime fan could look at this and appreciate it, yeah. you know, for what they're doing. And then anime fan could come in and go like, oh, brilliant. Like, <laughs> what a great pull. Yeah. Um, week 14, we get the Broncos at home. Is that the second? No, that's the first one. That's the first Bronco home game. So, yeah, we don't even face the Broncos until week 14. So, and then they remember you were back saying 17. Co- yeah, you were saying it, you were saying, Kyle. It was like you don't want to. You want to get the Broncos early before they get in their rhythm. We're not getting. We're not. They're going to be in their rhythm by the time we play. Yeah, them they didn't year. give us that favor. No, yeah, they're, no, well, they'll, they'll be yeah. banged up and <laughs> they'll be chugging and, along in whatever system yeah. they're trying to unleash. Uh, then week fifteen, we get the Raiders away. Prime time Thursday night football. All right, now this one, this pull. All now time. this is all yeah, time burn. This is direct shots taken at the entire fan base. There is a lot happening it, in God. this part. So this is for those that haven't seen. I, I don't know how you couldn't have if you're listening to this. Stop what you're doing. Go watch the Chargers schedule release video. But this part here, it, the first time we play them, he's playing a slot machine. Second time we play them, the voucher comes out, which is first of all Fantasy Treasure Resort, Family Trust <laughs> Respect. Cash out voucher, and then it's yeah. got the uh, what is it? The validation 51123, and it gives code. their records six and 11, 10 and seven, eight and eight, seven and nine, four and 12, six and 10. Their record basically for the past one, two, three, four, five, six years. Oh, and then the and then the cash out amount 72.75 million dollars. I assume that's Derek Carr's. Uh, contract for all of those previous years, like you paid seventy two million dollars, and that's the those are the records you get. Oh shit! And is then, that really what that what that amount is? I have to assume that I mean, because Derek Carr, this he wasn't playing off of his rookie contract. Yeah, no, I he think had a big I think contract. it's either that yeah, or how so much seventy two point seven five million. It's no, one or the other. I just looked either, it up. Garoppolo got a five year. No, that was his last one. Ah, shoot, I don't know. I don't even know what his contract is. I'm right pretty now. sure that was Derek Carr's contract. Okay, 
That's my, okay. that's we'll my, take it. We're, guess. Going. That's, we're going with that's it. where I'm putting my money on. But the, the, the icing on this FTR cake is the QR <laughs> code in the center, which for those that have not done, if you were to scan the QR code, it takes you to a charger's website with two simple buttons. If you're a charger fan, press here. If you're a Raiders fan, press here. Now, if you press, I'm charger fan. Takes you to the team schedule page where you can get tickets, see all that kind of stuff. However, if you were to click that you were a Raiders fan, it takes you to a Google search on how to get a job. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Oh, my God. So good. (laughs) Oh, my God. I I wish that they they give out awards for this. I think they did actually last year win win a Webby. For, for their schedule release video. They're due for another one. Give them two. Just for that alone. Um, Just the brilliant. most blatant burn I've ever <laughs> so seen. It's so awesome. It's so awesome on so many levels. Uh, I can't get over it. Losers. Who, who scanned that QR code? Like, who was the first Anybody. one? Anybody. Like, yeah, <laughs> Somebody had to do it, and then it, it, just, it just spreads. It's just word of mouth that, yeah. like, this is what happens when you scan the QR code. It's brilliant. Um, all right, week 16, we get the Bills at home primetime Saturday night football. This one gets you in the, this one hit, I don't know, we're taking shots at the Bills with this one. They're, they're uh, Super Bowls that they lost up in flames. Consecutively. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, four straight Super Bowls they couldn't win, like, yikes. Yeah, hey, I mean, it, it, it. It, if it's true, <laughs> is it really a bird? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing is they're not taking a reach on any of this stuff. No. All of these are just facts. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's just, it, it's different when you put facts in an anime and it's, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make it hurt less. Like our, no. everyone talking about us blowing that lead against the Jaguars, which is fact, another great doesn't point. Hurt less. It is a fact. And in fact, if you watch the video, it starts off with, yeah, with that 27 yeah. O receipt. receipt. Yeah. It's all crumpled up and the chargers had to recognize that and you get them going. Okay. We're stomping on that. It's in the past. We're moving forward. Here's our schedule for now this year. Now we're going to talk crap about now everybody else. Now we're going to talk shit about everybody yeah. else. So, um, And then week 17, we get the Broncos away, which I love this as well. That's going to be a cold one. That's on New Year's Eve. That's on New Year's Eve. And yes, well, and it, just it will be a cold one. To look back, we got lucky that we're not playing in Buffalo in, on December 23rd. We're, we got that game at home, yeah. which is, thank God, because yeah. that's going to be brutal. A lot there. warmer. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and the clip for week 17 for the Broncos, you got Sean Payton smashing up Russell Wilson's office because that His ain't happening on office. Sean Payton's wash. Yeah. And then uh, finally, the final game is going to be week 18 against the Chiefs at home, um, January 7th, they, they, to be determined. I, that could. With this one, this feels like they think the AFC West is going to come down to this game. Like we we don't yeah, usually get uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it feels like that's how they're feeling about us this year. So I'm I'm on board. I feel the same way. I mean, it's one of two ways: either we're playing them for the champ for the AFC West, yeah. or the Chiefs have already clinched, and we're going to get backups week eighteen, trying to solidify our wild card. So, or we are already a, clinched, <laughs> or the, the <laughs> third option, which is the one I prefer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a great schedule. Great schedule release video. Everything was just perfect. Uh, and then the final image, uh, having all of the greats, uh, this is this is referencing another anime, and they're all just kind of, every great Charger player that we've ever had just kind of hovering in space, facing the wall. Just a chilling kind of last shot of the whole thing, and LT kind of looking over at the camera with the lightning in his eyes, and ah, it's beautiful. It was pretty awesome. So good. Well done. I heard some rumors Charger that they social think it's media they, knocked it I out heard of the, the, park. the the rumor is that the the navy helmet is the what they're signaling because they're doing that third that uh, optional different color helmet this year, and that's what they're referencing. Is oh the, right, the yeah, navy helmet. So that's the one I've seen hey, around everywhere. Which I, I would be so for that. Um, all navies yeah, that with would be the navy sick. helmet. That's going to be scary. We just got to win in it. That's all. I, maybe the helmet yeah, will be the one that pushes us over is. the edge. That yeah, would be like nice. Yeah. Five? I don't know. Yeah. No, we've okay. only... Had, <laughs> we'll figure that out. <laughs> I think three. I think three. 
<laughs> I think we've only had the like New five. Jersey's for those three were, years now. I know those were blowout losses and they fucking sucked. It feels like five. <laughs> I'm going to say five. I'm going five. Going five. Show me five. Going five. <laughs> All right. Three. one dollar bob um yeah all right well great video now we know the schedule so we can all start planning accordingly getting our tickets and getting set up so week one obviously uh, good luck with all of that can we just get on the same page week one dolphins we'll make this work yeah we we just got to do it uh down the road i hate to say all right we'll talk about it later but Thank you. Oh, trust me. <laughs> Didn't no, no. really want to like. <laughs> no, no, no. I've already looked at all of it. We're going to make it work. Okay. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Sounds like an aggressive travel plan. Okay. <laughs> it is. It's going to be an aggressive travel plan. All right. Well, looking over at the Chargers now, we saw our favorite, Justin Herbert, back out on the field for training camp, hawking the ball to everybody. Uh, including some of the new players, but just seeing him out there throwing after the whole injury and you know offseason surgery and everything like that hasn't seemed to have lost a step or anything like that. Granted, he wasn't, you know, these weren't full, full-blown drills, but just to see him throw the ball as gracefully as he does, obviously well, wonderful last to see him we, do it again. Last we heard is that we weren't we're sure if he was even going to throw when they came back next time when everyone got together. Camp, yeah. So right, yeah. the fact that he's throwing now, clearly he's doing okay. Because they just released that video where he was, they must have recorded it a while ago, where he was doing the Callaway golf thing. And he was out there with, uh, did you guys see that? Where he, I, I don't remember what the show was called, but they're like basically uh, two golfers hang out and they talk with, celeb- uh, with celebrities. So he was talking with this guy, not being able to swing. He was swinging one-handed. And that was the last thing I saw like mm. two days ago. And now this, it's like... Oh, thank God. I was like stressed watching that video and I feel okay because he's clearly progressed to a point where he can throw a little, which is, you got to get signed off on that by the doctors. He got scans. He got all that. True. Shit, so he's yeah. got to be good. Excellent. Yeah. It's great to see. And then Daniel Popper tweeted out phase two of Chargers offseason program wrapping up this week. Austin Johnson is here working with trainers with no brace on his knee. Great to hear. Love and it. JC Jackson also present doing football drills off to the side. Wow. I did My not goodness. see that coming. What that is so dude. encouraging. We th- we were talking like career ending potential injury. This guy's not gonna he's gonna be back for training camp. That's what it sounds like. It's dude. certainly looking that way. Yeah. I mean, it, doctors, the the type of injury, and I can't recall the exact name of the injury, but it was it was a brutal injury to the point that even doctors were like, Yeah, I mean. Most people that get this injury, they're they're done. Like they're yeah. maybe coming back fifty percent of what they were, and to see him recovering He's talking as about well as revenge he has. games against the Patriots and oh Fox yeah. Bro, so. yeah, his oh, yeah. mindset, dude. When you have that mindset on, on that stuff, you know he's going to do everything yeah. in his power to get back and play. He's ready, right? And there's no, this is not going to be a similar situation of last year where all of a sudden he was getting a. a a surgery for for something in his in his foot over something that has been bothering him for a long time. This is no, I forgot. No, about this that. is post bizarre. major injury. He's been working in the off season. He's been training and trying to get back rehabbing, and now he's back out there doing drills on the side. Awesome, love it. Um, all right, and then Daniel Popper tweeted out the Chargers announced they have signed six of their draft picks. And that's basically everybody. Quentin Johnston, Dayon Henley, Darius Davis, Jordan McFadden, Scott Matlock, and Max Duggan. The only one not signed is uh, Tuli Tui Paladu. So that second round's a weirder contract. Like they, there's a lot more like wiggle room on like there's still very fine lines of what you can do, but like the it, mm-hmm. it's a tougher draft pick in terms of negotiations for getting that done. So I, I could see why the yeah. second might be holding out, but I don't think he's gonna be holding out very long. No, I, I mean, it, I imagine it'll happen any day now, especially with everybody else already signing, like whatever yeah. it is, I'm sure it's just fine print that needs to get sorted out. So yep. awesome though, to see that everybody else has already signed good to go. There's no question, no, no, nothing, just getting out there and getting trained. And I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think he's held out of the training camp either. I'm sure he's, I think he, I saw that he yeah, was out they there still, still training. Yeah. 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 So it's not like there. I'm not practicing until my contract signed. Like no. he's, he's still out there yeah. with the guys. So, um, awesome to see. Uh, and, uh, well, what else is awesome to see is our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat, uh, where we just posted another, I'll, I'll say it. It's a funny video of, uh, our <laughs> shenanigans of, in Kansas city. 
Uh, Kevin did the editing <laughs> of, of the showdown. That was the tortilla challenge. And uh, if it you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash charge or chat. And uh, if you don't want to go there, that's fine. That's okay. You can go on over to our regular website, chargechat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions and ask bold fam. So go check out chargechat.com. All right, gang, time to go on to the next segment. It's our good friend Jason Reed over at The Bolt Beat. Welcome back to another edition of The Bolt Beat. As always, I am your host, Jason Reed, the acting editor over at boltbeat.com. Go check us out for all your Chargers coverage. You can follow us on Twitter at BB underscore Chargers, or you can follow myself for my horrible sports takes at Eat Your Reedies. Like Eat Your Wheaties, but Reedies, because my last name is Reed. Today is Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, and we are officially entering the quiet parts of the NFL offseason. Draft is done. NFL schedule release is done. Training camp hasn't happened yet. It's the dog days of summer, baby. There's going to be a, not a lot of things to talk about, but a lot of different ways to spin the little bit of information we have to keep on talking about it. Um, you know, last time we talked about the draft and whatnot, you know, this week it's more, the more relevant thing is the schedule. I know everyone's given out their 2023 schedule predictions, their record predictions. That's kind of the thing to do in the NFL media landscape. And of course, I'm not going to be any different. I'm going to do the same thing for y'all here at the Bolt Beat. Um, you know, the Charger schedule, we already knew who they were playing. We already knew where they were playing. We just didn't know the order in which they were playing and primetime games. Now, the Chargers got some some great things from the, the NFL in the schedule, and they got some bad things, some great things. They are tied for the most primetime games in the league with six. That could go up if the team gets games flexed into primetime, which is absolutely possible, as we saw last year. Um, some bad things. Early bye week, week five bye week is not great in an 18 week NFL season. If the Chargers end up making a Super Bowl run, they will have to play, assuming they don't get the first, if they get the first round bye as the number one seed, they'd get a break. But if they didn't, they'd have to play what, 21 weeks in a row, 20 weeks in a row to get to the Super Bowl before that week break? Like that's really, really hard to do. That being said, both the Chiefs and the Eagles had an early bye last year. So maybe that's a good sign. Uh, the Chargers also don't have back to back home games, which is kind of a bummer. And the team also didn't really get full advantage of the short weeks that it has. Um, you know, coming off the Thursday game, I believe they have a Sunday game after that. So they didn't get the full 10 days week, 10 days of rest. Uh, their Monday night game against the Dallas Cowboys is coming off their bye. So they didn't get to benefit from that extra day. And then, you know, because they already had a whole week off anyway. So, you know, some of the things that teams usually get advantages on, the Chargers actually didn't get this year. But all in all, I mean, yeah, you could go through game by game, which I did on Bolpy.com. Go check it out. I'm not going to go game by game here, um, but you could go game by game, kind of factor in some of the the external things and kind of figure out where you think the Chargers are going to finish. For me personally, I have the Chargers finishing with an 11 and six record. That is one game better than last season's 10 and seven record. Now, I usually joke because I feel like the number one thing that people do in these schedule predictions, not just Charger fans, but, you know, writers and fans and pundits across the whole landscape, every team is they predict their team to win 10 or 11 games. Like back in the 16 game schedule, everyone predicted their team to go 10 and six or 11 and five. And it's the perfect like, I'm going to predict predict my team to do good, but I don't want to predict my team to win too many games because then I seem like too much of a homer. So I'm going to land at 10, 11 wins. I, I make fun of a lot of people for doing that just because that's kind of the trend. You know, no one l wants to predict 17 and 0 and no one's going to predict three and 14. They're going to predict 10 or 11 wins. Maybe if you're a bad team like the Raiders, you know, they'll predict nine wins is like some sort of number that they could reach to, which we all know they won't. Um, you know, so I have them finishing 11 and six. This isn't, I'm not falling into the trap. Last year, I did predict them to go 13 and four. So I try to be, you know, very realistic, very subjective, very objective, excuse me, with my predictions. And this year I have 11 and six. I'm not going to go game by game. I will tell you the six losses. I have the Chargers losing the first Chiefs game, which is at Arrowhead. Um, you know, I love the Chargers. I hope they beat the Chiefs twice this year. I'm rooting for it, obviously, but the Chiefs are the king of the mountain. And until the Chargers can beat them twice in one season, I'm just going to assume that they're going to split. I think splitting against the Chiefs is a very good thing. A lot of teams in the NFL would love to split against the Chiefs if they have to play them two times. So I do have them splitting against the Chiefs, winning in week 18, but losing the first matchup at Arrowhead. I have them losing against the uh, Baltimore Ravens. That's a primetime game Sunday night. Look, you can't win them all. You know, there's a lot of tough games on the schedule and to predict the Chargers to win all of them. I know the Chargers chat guys always optimistic, you know, 17 and 0 and all of that. 
um, trying to be, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, I'll, I'll look at it a glass half, half empty a little bit. Uh, the Ravens game, it's just a tough matchup. It's one of the hardest teams to prepare against in the league. And I think if you're going to lose a game, it's going to be something like that. I'm also losing against the Bills. I think it's going to be an offensive shootout, something, you know, we're looking at 60, 70 points. And I think it's one of those games that literally comes down to who has the ball last. Um, and again, I think there will be games where that, that are like this, that the Chargers will win. I think this is just one of them where they fall on the wrong side of it. I have them losing on the road against the Jets in prime time. If this was a Sunday evening or Sunday morning game for us West Coasters or even a home game, I have the Chargers winning. But on the road, prime time in New York, it's not quite cold yet, but it's still getting a little frigid in the first week of November. Um, I just have the Jets barely eking that out with their great defense. Might be an ugly game. I don't think Rodgers is going to be as great as everyone thinks, although when I get into my playoff predictions for the, all the playoff teams, I'll, I'll show you where I think the Jets are going to finish. I have them losing against the Lions. Again, one of those 50-50 games. You know, it's the NFL season. We're all Charger fans. We've all been there. They don't win every game that they should win. And this feels like just one of those where if you're going to circle a game for them to lose, it's this one. A lot of people circle the Patriots game. I actually think the Chargers are going to go into that game wanting to send a message um, and are going to win on the road in New England, but fall to the Detroit Lions at home. And then perhaps the most shocking one, I have them losing at Denver. Now I know, you know, the Chargers are a much better team than the Broncos. I don't think Sean Payton's going to fix all their problems. Like Bronco fans want to believe he's going to, but at the end of the day, Denver's still a very, very hard place to play. And the Chargers have to play them in January, um, January, late December. Excuse me. I don't remember exactly when on the calendar that falls. It's late in the season though. Um, it's just a hard place to play, you know, and, Hopefully by this point in the season, the Chargers don't have as much to play for. No matter what, they're going to have some sort of playoff seating. Um, but I think the Broncos, you know, they're going to be hanging on for dear life at this point of the season, trying to stay relevant, stay in the picture. And I just, you know, I think they eke it out. You know, division games are tough. Beating a team twice is tough. Going four and two in the AFC West is nothing to lose sleep over. And I would take that, you know, every year if I could. Um, obviously, five and one to six would be better. Um, my playoff teams. So I have the Chargers finishing 11 and six with the 11 and six record. I actually have them finishing as the number one wild card in the AFC. Boo, I know, not predicting an AFC West title. It just goes back to the Chiefs. Look, I thought last year was the year the Chiefs would take a step back. You know, they got worse. Their schedule was really hard. All the signs were there for them to go 10 and seven and the Chargers to leapfrog them in the division. And they didn't. They won the Super Bowl. They were the number one seed in the AFC. They beat the Chargers both times. Like this team has earned the respect that the Patriots used to get where you kind of just pencil them in until proven otherwise. Now, are the Chargers talented enough to prove them otherwise? Absolutely. Can they beat them twice? Absolutely. And I hope they do. But until that happens, you know, maybe do a little bit of reverse jinx and predict the the Chiefs, you know, to finish number one in the division. I've been finishing number one in the AFC with a 13 and four record. Their schedule is not that hard compared to last year. Yeah, they got some tough teams just like the Chargers, but it's really not that hard. You know, they have some tough games. You figure they go, you know, they split all their tough games. They lose one against the Chargers, and then they lose like a random game like they did last year, and that's four losses. Uh, I have the, in a surprising move, I have the Ravens winning the AFC North. I know the Bengals are the hot team on the streets right now, but people forget just how good this team is when Lamar Jackson is playing. Like, yeah, there's some flaws and some limitations in the playoffs, but as a regular season football team, they are the hardest team to game plan against in the NFL with Lamar Jackson under center. As long as he stays healthy, he's got more weapons. He still has a great defense. This is a really good Ravens team that plays the Bengals really well as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens beat the Bengals both times and stole the AFC North. I know that's not the, the popular pick, but I like the Ravens as a regular season team. I have them finishing 12 and five. I have the Jaguars winning the AFC South. That goes without saying the AFC South is one of the worst divisions in football history. Uh, the Jaguars should win it. I have them going nine and eight, though. I think the Jaguars are a little overrated. Yeah, they came back against the Chargers. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has had some, a few really good games. But, you know, I still, Doug Peterson still kind of makes some questionable decisions at times in the regular season. And Lawrence still has had some really bad stinkers. You know, yeah, he's had the huge games like Herbert, but he nowhere, he doesn't have anywhere close to the consistency that Herbert has, which kind of irks me when people put them in the same conversation, if not Lawrence a little higher. But that's just, you know, pre established bias from Lawrence being the first overall pick in the draft. I have the Bills finishing atop the AFC East with a 12 and 5 record. It's a much better AFC East than the years past. But the Bills are still the best team in the division. I have the Bengals as the second wild card, 11 and six with the Chargers. These two are obviously interchangeable, both the Chargers and Bengals. It's going to come down to tiebreakers who gets the higher seed technically. I just put the Chargers one because I'm a Chargers fan, obviously. Um, and then I have the Jets finishing as the third wild card in the AFC, 10 and seven record. I think you need 10 wins to get into the playoffs in the AFC. 
It's deep. It's loaded. It's talented. There's going to be a lot of teams in the picture. There's going to be nine and eight teams, eight, and nine teams, 10 and seven. There might be a 10 and seven team that misses the playoffs. I think bare minimum chargers need to win 10 games, you know, with the jets getting better and the Ravens getting better and a bunch of teams getting better, quite frankly, but I have the jets going 10 and seven. A lot of people might pencil them in for more wins with Rogers. Excuse me. Rogers wasn't very good last year. Yeah. He didn't have a great supporting cast, but we've seen this age curve just hit people suddenly. Not everyone's Tom Brady. Look at Russell Wilson. He sucked his last year in Seattle or his last half season in Seattle. I should say Broncos fans made excuses for him. They said it'd be different, blah, blah, blah. Rogers wasn't very good last year. Now he was better than Wilson was, you know, his last half season in Seattle, but I don't think we're getting prime Aaron Rodgers. We're going to get like the seventh or eighth best quarterback in the league, which is still very, very good. And is going to be good enough because that roster so talented to win 10 games. But I don't think we're going to see some 14 and three jets team. That looks like the Packers team from two, two and three years ago. So I have them finishing as the third wild card. As for the AFC, it doesn't really impact the chargers, but I, I figured it'd be a nice way to just wrap a button up on this bolt beat. Um, I have the Seahawks winning the NFC West. I think that goes without saying, you know, they knocked on the door last year. They made the playoffs. They've had another great off season. I think they've only gotten better and they're going to um, leap some teams that got that are going to get worse next season. In my opinion, 10 and seven winning the division. I have the lions winning the NFC North. This is like everyone's quote unquote dark horse. That's not really a dark horse because everyone's picking them. So then how is it a dark horse? Um, you know, the NFC North the Packers got worse. Vikings were the worst 13 win team in NFL history last year. Now they actually have a tough schedule. Um, the bears are getting better, but aren't quite there yet. I think the lions make it with a nine and eight record. Uh, I got the Saints 10 and 7. The Saints are not a better team than the Lions, but they play in a horrible division and have by far the easiest schedule in the league in terms of 2023 win totals. Um that schedule is as much of a cakewalk as it gets. They have Derek Carr quarterback who we all know yes makes some mistakes, but like if you just need him to be a game manager, he's one of the best game managers in the sport and in a horrible division with a very easy schedule and a good defense, the Saints are probably going to win 10 games. And we just said the Vikings were the worst 13 win team in the league last year. The saints might be the worst 10 win league team in league history. Like they're not very good, but that division stinks and their schedule is very easy. I have the Eagles winning the NFC East and having the best record in the NFC 12 and five. I think they take a little bit of a step back with a harder schedule. Um, you know, they lost some players and whatnot, but at the end of the day, the NFC is still pretty paper thin. And even if they go 11 and six, that's going to be enough for them to finish as the number one seed in the NFC. Once again, I have them going 12 and five. As far as the wild card teams, I have the Cowboys going 10 and seven. Um, again, a paper thin NFC. I think the chargers are like a better version of the Cowboys. Um, I have them finishing only one game apart. You know, if the chargers were in the NFC, I think they actually have a legitimate chance of being the top team in the NFC. That's how thin the NFC is. I have the 49ers as the second wild card going nine and eight. There's some quarterback questions. Brock Purdy just had Tommy John surgery. Like that's a big thing. You know, they don't know what they're doing with Trey Lance. They have Sam Darnold on the roster. Like Kyle Shanahan will find a way to win games, but this is a 49ers team that has gone so up and down with winning a lot of games and then getting hurt, not winning a lot of games. I think they have enough talent to eke out nine wins, but I don't think it's going to be as pretty as last year. And then my quote unquote dark horse, I guess my third wild card team, a lot of people would pick the giants. Um, some people might even pick the Rams, the Cardinals, if they think they're going to take a step up the Vikings, you know, a team like that. I'm gonna go with the Carolina Panthers. I know I just said the NFC South was really, really bad, but the Panthers are going to benefit from that being the second best team in the NFC South. I actually have them finishing eight, eight and one just to be funny. But I think, you know, they already showed the signs last year. They just didn't have the quarterback. Baker Mayfield wasn't it. And then there was a, a rotation of quarterbacks, you know, throughout the year. And they still managed to put together a pretty decent season. So I think they have some, some, some real dogs on defense. I think they had a good draft. I think they have offensive weapons. They had the second overall or the first, first overall pick, excuse me, in the 2023 NFL draft. I know there's some questions about Bryce young and whatnot, um, but Frank Reich's a really good coach. And I think Bryce young is going to be good enough to, you know, lead the Panthers to at least eight wins and potentially a playoff spot might be a little controversial, but Hey, you got to have at least one surprising pick and the, I'm not counting the lines as a surprising pick like anyone else. So those are my seven playoff teams. Of course, even though the chargers won, or I have them as a wild card, they're going to win the super bowl because they're just going to, they're going to play. Let's see, based on my predictions, they're going to get their revenge against the Jaguars. You know, there's a lot of storylines in that game. Boom. That's easy. And then they're going to have to play the, um, I don't know. They might get to play the chiefs in the second round. You know, the chiefs, no team in the league knows the chiefs better than the chargers. 
boom, Chargers beat the Chiefs. There we go. Then we're in the AFC Championship against like the Ravens. Can't beat a good team twice. I have them beating the Chargers in the regular season. Boom, Chargers get their revenge in the AFC Championship. And then suddenly they're in the Super Bowl against an NFC team that probably won't be very good unless it's the Eagles. If it's someone other than the Eagles, it, it's, it's a winnable game for the Chargers. So even though I have the Chargers finishing as a wild card, anything can happen in the playoffs. And I think there's still some potential and some excitement with this season because all you got to do is get hot at the right time. And this Chargers team, as long as it stays healthy, is absolutely talented enough to make a run at the first Super Bowl in franchise history. That's my predictions for the Chargers season, for the standings, for the playoff teams. Let me know what you what record you have the Chargers finishing with, what you have, you know, your 14 playoff teams, seven in each conference, and how far you think the Chargers are going to go. Um, that's all I got for you guys next week. I'm actually going to be on vacation. My next scheduled appearance on the Charger Chat podcast. I need to uh, let the guys know that. You know, you, the listeners are the first to know, even though the Charger Chat guys will hear this before it goes up. Um, going on a road trip, driving to Atlanta, to Florida, all that fun stuff. It's going to be like a 19 day trip. So I'll be out of commission. So until I talk to you guys next time with my vacation over and my my brain reset, um, let's get back to the Charger Chat guys. Well, thank you, Jason, for another awesome bolt beat. 11 and 6. I just don't understand I don't looking see at that. the schedule and not seeing 17 and 0. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like going into the season, yeah, the Bills game, it's going to be an offensive shootout. But why would I look at that and not assume that the Chargers are going to win? Or at least have a shot. Like, well, no, no. He said they were going to have a shot. Like, it was going to be a 30 point each way right. game. It's going to be close. True. So it's like, I don't know. In my head, I'm like, if it's going to be close, why wouldn't I just assume the Chargers win? Let me just lean on the side of the Chargers or something <laughs> like that. You know, let yeah. me just let me lean the needle at least a little that and way. But is it realistic? No, they're going to lose a couple games. But I don't course. know how to pick which one they're going to lose. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, trying to pick a team like the Bills or the Ravens or the Chiefs or something like that is like the clear possible. I, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the case. I think the the losses sometimes are the ones that you never see coming. The Jaguars. You know, the ones that you're just like, yeah, you're just like the Jaguar. Now, come on, we could do this. And like, yeah, and then we lose twice. And didn't see that coming. But, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, 11 and 6, I think it's a little low there, Jason. I mean, I get it. You know, I, I understand where you're coming from. But I think uh, we're, we're going to do a little bit better than that, especially with Kellen Moore coming in. Yeah, 17 and 0. Just a little bit better, Jason. 17 yeah. and 0. That's all I'm saying. Just six games off. I just don't think we're going <laughs> to win the AFC West with 11 and 6. And that's my goal this year. So 17 and 0, baby. Yeah, we got to, dude. Like, it's got to be the year. It's got to happen again. It can't just be always the Chiefs. It, has to it happen. can't be. It's bullshit. It, it's got to it change. They can't keep getting away with it. And, uh, and this have is not fun okay. On it's your, not on fair. And it's not okay. <laughs> uh, have fun, Jason. Uh, yes, we'll we'll, we'll look forward soon. to seeing you again in about a month. But uh, have a have a great old time, and uh, we'll take care of things over here. Um. And thank you again for another awesome Bolt Beat. Uh, all right, folks, time to go on to the next segment. It is Ask Bolt Fam. Let's go. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh, hi, guys. Go jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we started off with OM Run, who asked the question, Do you think the rumors that Herbert hasn't reached out to any of the rookies yet is true? To paraphrase number 10, I've never wanted a lie so bad. Hashtag say it ain't so. I haven't heard about this anywhere. So OM Run, I don't know what tabloids you're reading. If you're... uh. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I saw I it not in, heard this uh, there at was all. An interview, there was an interview with Quentin Johnston where he said that, you know, basically Mike Will and Keenan went over to his hotel when he arrived and he already met with them. Um, mm -hmm. And the the all he got from Justin was a follow back on Instagram. So, but I'm not even concerned because they just released photos of them practicing and it's, they're high-fiving. They're, they're best friends now. So, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think, and just, you look at Justin, he's not on social media. He's not on this shit. Uh, he yeah. probably doesn't even text that much, to be honest. You know, he's got, he's doing right. whatever he's doing. So I'm, I don't think this is any slight on his character or anything like that. No, no. It, it, yeah. It doesn't seem like it was intentional, if anything. So, 
I'm going to go with rumor on that one, OM Run, but thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kyle Goodwin, who asked the question. If Justin Herbert developed the ability to communicate with animals on the football field, and for some reason we could draft animals, how would his newfound talent influence the game? Okay. Well, <laughs> Dr. Doolittle so out there called What's the, the name of that movie where it's the Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> Slow Sorry, guys, I'm, swing, but that's I am okay. so delayed. This is no, this is this is I might be a little quieter on this ass bolt fam because my Romania <laughs> internet sucks and my jokes, the timing is not gonna be great. I'm just gonna be honest. It almost I, mean, makes I have to try and funnier. guess what it you're gonna say better. two seconds before you say it. <laughs> F- <laughs> hate you, Romania. Uh, I can't we, wait to leave. <laughs> we would have also accepted Ace Ventura, but yeah. uh yes. I think uh, yeah. if Justin Herbert have developed the ability to communicate with animals, uh, just how does so we don't have to draft them? They could just fly over and crap in a, the opponent's face. <laughs> just flying V. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, very yeah. nice. That would yeah. be funny. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I can't think of any good animals that could like catch the ball. A dog maybe could catch it in its mouth, but it's got could- the helmet. You don't want to get. You don't want a dog getting concussed. That's just sad. Yeah. <laughs> so I would do if you're going to do it, you go offensive line and you just do like five rhinos. I th- you're not stopping. Ooh. I don't care who who you are, what you are. Five rhinos on the <laughs> offensive line. You just, yeah, but you're just killing the other team, like literally killing them every point. <laughs> well, I think they could just stand hey. there. I think they could just be a wall of rhinos, and I think they'd get the they job could just done. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly move forward. Just slowly move forward. Somebody's getting gouged with one of those horns eventually. We'll put some corks on the end. Cork. Hey, Big football's cork. a tough game, man. Somebody's going to get hurt. You know, it's just a matter of time. Especially with a team full of animals. But yeah. uh, Kyle Goodwin, great question. We love it. Thank you for asking it. Let's move it on now to Daryl Sandlin, 21, who asked the question. Watching the last episode and hearing the positivity for picking Duggan in the seventh, I figured my last rant during last week's question, where as I was slamming him, might get me roasted a bit. Mm. Oh, thanks for going on me. I've since warmed up to him and understand the pick much better. Hoo-ha! Okay. <laughs> now, the release of the schedule. I'm looking forward to your thoughts and especially which game or more that you guys may plan on going to. I'd love to hit Thunder Alley and meet you guys, okay? As well as having Kevin explain to an old fart like me from San Diego how I can get on Fan Focus. I wish I was more f***ing tech savvy. Hoo-ha! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next episode. Okay. Love you. Bye. Message me, dude. Just go on our Instagram, <laughs> Twitter. that's the disconnect, DM. Kev. <laughs> that's uh, yeah that's a i guess a big leap for daryl to, to to message so why don't you reach out to him pigeon <laughs> pigeon we can do that <laughs> you you start the connection kev he'll all right daryl sandlin we're I'm coming on at it, the, i'm coming for I'm coming you. out those f-ing dms get ready <laughs> keep your eyes open there daryl and uh yeah glad we could uh bring you around to to the pick of max duggan i think uh I, I'm excited now for the preseason just to see what he can yeah. do because we know what Easton Stick can do. Right. I don't know yeah. what Max Duggan can do. And I'm I'm curious to see. Is that is this could be and granted, yes, it's the preseason. You know, we saw a wide receiver play really well during preseason and then not much of a blip during the regular season. And in the case of Max Duggan, if he plays great preseason, that's awesome because yeah. chances are we're not going to see him at all during the regular season. So no. You just know what you have. You just You'll know save money on a in contract the for yeah. ne- the, the next year if you don't end up going with, uh, you know, f-ing, my brain is, I'm, it's so early. Stick. stick. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's shit. okay. Dude. <laughs> Come oh, on. Oh, shit. Oh, Dude. <laughs> bread, man. It's not Tighten it up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all <laughs> delayed. <laughs> Not only in my jokes, but in my fucking internet connection. <laughs> but in my communication skills, all right? Communication um, skills. <laughs> all right. I love that. That comes two seconds later. <laughs> it's not funny. Thank- I can't stand it over here. This sucks. <laughs> it again. This fucking sucks. <laughs> Daryl, thank you for asking the question. 
Uh, I don't even know that there was a question. We'll 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 get no, it all worked out. No, there was out. a game. The what games? games what game oh, the games. Game. Sorry. What so games, I know there's, Kevin? There's a lot of there's a lot of scheduling we got to do. Kyle's gonna have four kids. I got four kids. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to get us all we in the got same work. place at the same time. We got jobs. We got work, so. Oh. Uh. My goals, I think it's a tradition that we need to try and keep doing, and I'm going to do everything in my everything in my means possible to make this work is the home opener. Because yes. that's when we all get together as Bolt fam again. We're all experiencing, you know, Thunder Alley again for the first time in a long time. So I, I'm feeling Dolphins is pretty good. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it works for everybody. But um, the Dolphins, I feel, is good. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> Whoa. I think week one. If you want to, the best bet to find us at a game, week one is probably the best bet. I my fourth kids coming middle of the season, so my ability to make games at the end of the year is going to be tough. So I think week one. If you really want to come hang out with the Shark Chat squad, come come on out. Yeah, come correct. Yeah, we definitely try to make as many games as we possibly can, but week one is usually that's the for sure one that we we pencil in. So if Let's you want to make sushi. one, what does that mean? Dolphins. We're playing the Dolphins. Oh, come on. got it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, Kyle got me. I got you, Kev. <laughs> All right. You got two seconds. You got, you got next. You got a little delay. It'll, it'll be okay. We'll I, catch sorry. Up. It's too deep of a cut for me. Uh, Daryl yeah. Sandlin. He's not a sushi guy. He's it's early for you. Guy. It's late as shit for me. So <laughs> Daryl Sandlin, we're, 21. We're on the, dude, we are on these totally opposite ends of the spectrum where you're tired and I'm fucking waking up tired. So it's like these Everyone's different tired. levels of tired. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Daryl Sandlin, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Costa Cat. That's certified fresh. Okay. Who asked the question? Tips for first time attendees to Chargers games at SoFi. I went to Qualcomm, but a week one will be my first time attending in LA. Well, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, congrats. Yes, well, I love it. So what what are some good tips that we can give Costa Cat? Um prepare for God awful traffic. So show up really early the traffic to tailgate. Is, yeah, it's and just bad. tailgate for another couple hours after the game. Luckily, this isn't a primetime game, so it's right smack in the middle of the day. So get there as early as you can in the morning. I think that lots open up at like nine o'clock or something along those lines. Yeah, the the tailgate is the pink lot, right? Um, yes. So wherever you yeah. park or if you get dropped off, just go over to the tailgate lot and be there for a few. Find find some squad. They have usually TVs with games on of the early, the early games, and just don't after the game. Don't try to leave. It's a complete waste of your time. Yeah, give, give it, it two give hours. Give it a couple hours. Give it two hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take some time. Go check out the shop. There's a ton of merchandise that if you don't have a lot, there's a ton of like uh, specific merchandise that you can only get at the team shop at the stadium. So. Uh, you know, when you're done with the game, go check out the shop, find some stuff and just, yeah, saunter out, like take your time, enjoy the, enjoy the Here festivities. And I'm going to say something friends. that's going to be two seconds delayed because I'm glitching oh. like a motherfucker right now. We'll see if I'm even on the show and you're gone. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> What's your thought, Kev? What were you going to say? This. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I had a, a um, I will say, are you crying? This is, guys, this is this is going well. It sounded like you were whimpering. I am. <laughs> this sucks. I'm just like I, I wake up really early for this, and it's not working. And I'm doing like so many things. And I'm sweaty because I turned off the air conditioning, <laughs> so it sounds better. And now it's all fucking falling apart. <laughs> Have fun at your um, first game. Drink Costa water. Cat. H2O at the tailgate. <laughs> you waited a long time to hear. Drink some water at the tailgate. Make sure you stay hydrated. Oh, oh that was good. <laughs> good thing you asked us. <laughs> All right. Yes. And we'll we'll keep an eye out for you, Costa Cat. Thank you for asking the question. Uh, let's move it on now to the Bryce is right, bitch. Oh, good name. Certified also fresh. certified fresh. Okay, who asked the question? Well, gentlemen, the electricity has not left my veins since watching that schedule release video. Watching Herbert step on that receipt put the final end to my torment and misery. 
It reminded me to forget the past and focus on what lies ahead. On top of that, I came across a video of Mike Florio and Chris Sims from NBC who did a breakdown of the Chargers schedule release video. The best part about it was that Mike Florio finally learned what FTR meant. It gave me a hard on when he explained <laughs> to Chris Sims on live television that it's our way of saying f the Raiders. Now, here's my question. What was your guy's favorite part of the schedule release video? Mine was the QR code for Raider fans on how to get a job. Also, can I get your opinion on the ending? What could the ending mean or be referring to when the video ended with the all-time great Charger hero standing facing the wall that looked like a torn building in a galaxy and seeing the electricity coming off of LT? Do you think they will build off from the ending in next year's schedule release video in 2024? I got the feeling that the Chargers are giving us a sneak peek or a little nugget in next year's schedule release video. Or did I miss something? Can't wait to see what happens next. K love you, bye. FTR. Yes, uh, watching, watching those guys explain FTR and figuring it out was fantastic. Um, as far as... Favorite part of the schedule release video? Do you guys have a a favorite? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's safe to say most fans will will like that QR code of how to get a job for the yeah, Raiders. The QR code That's is just such like a hidden nugget, and also such a great, incredible burn for the whole fan base. Yeah, it just that's that's just genius. I think the digs the digs at the Chiefs was my favorite, just because. It's the Chiefs, mm. but the, mm. it's the QR code the is Chiefs. badass. Like, there's so many deep cuts yeah. in this thing, man. It's it's like brutal. And they did the 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 Jets dirty with some of the stuff about you know the quarterback hooking up with Mills and all that stuff. Like, <laughs> all of, it's all great. I it's it's hard to pick. Yeah. It's hard to pick. Really, it is hard to pick. Uh, the 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 Chiefs is great. The the Raiders are great. Uh, the Broncos are great. Russell I, Wilson, Russell Wilson fighting Patrick Patrick Star. Star. <laughs> that uh, honestly, that was probably one of my favorite moments great. last year of the guy voicing Patrick calling <laughs> Russell Wilson's interception. I, I, it was the best thing ever. In in fact, there should be more Nickelodeon games. I don't know if that's on the schedule yeah. for more Nickelodeon games. I'm my I fingers so. are crossed because that was so my kid, freaking my funny. kid loves it. Ah, oh, it was such a blast. Um. And yeah, the, the Chiefs one is great. As far as the last shot, um, <coughs> excuse me, the shot itself is, is referencing another anime, a lot like some of these other uh, bits on some of the other teams. They're all referencing some anime of some kind. And so the very last shot, it's referencing one that's called My Hero Academia. It's honestly like one of the only animes that I actually have watched and really enjoy. And the whole premise of the anime is there. The whole premise of the anime is that like 80% of the people in the world have a superpower, not necessarily like a great superpower. Some people have like awesome power. Some people are like, I could stinky shoot farts. Yeah. Like stinky <laughs> farts or I could shoot water out of my finger or I can, you know, stretch my hair out an extra inch or something like that. Something it, not everybody gets to make something. my internet work one of those. <laughs> or make it worse. Um, <laughs> And then the other 20% of people don't have a superpower. They're just normal, regular, everyday people. Muggles. But basically. So, but that's a huge difference. 80% having some kind of power and 20% having nothing. One of them is a kid, really wants a power. And this isn't spoiling anything. This happens within like the first couple episodes. Finds out that there is a power that can get passed on from one person to another. So he can inherit that power without having one of his own. And so basically it's reference. It's something that's been passed on like through generations. And that's uh, what the last shot is. These are all the greats, all the people that have had the best superpowers, oh, so to speak, yeah. passed Badass. on from one generation to another. It's awesome. I love it. It's a great reference. Um, but as far as it being a tease for, you know, different unis or different helmet, I'm hoping I would love to see the, the, the Navy helmet for sure. I think Same. that would be just such a hot look it would be hot, hot, hot. and and i've seen like some other renditions of like having the the white jersey but with navy lettering you know like the old school kind of jerseys and then the navy helmet ah there's a lot of possibilities out there like taking some of the old colors and introducing them into the new jersey look that i would i would love to see but 
I don't, that might be a bit of a reach. I'm with it. I want it to happen, but it might be a bit of a reach. So I think we covered all the questions there. Uh, Bryce, is there, yep. is there one that we missed? I think we got it all. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to the podcast. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, really great do. name, by it's the awesome. way. The Bryce is right, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Uh, is a fantastic name. We love it. Thank you. Happy Gilmore. Yes. That? Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Swipe Graphics, who asked the question. First off, thank you, kind gents, for answering my questions from the last episode. Thank you, Kevin, for loving what I do on the Instagram and Twitter. Means a lot coming from you. Also, shout out Wooly for the Valley Girl voice when reading off the question. Oh, that's easily my favorite run right now. My questions are as follows. One, do you think or should we go after Dalvin Cook after he gets cut from the Vikings? We already have Eric Kendricks from them. And given the Austin Eckler situation, he, that being Dalvin, I feel would help provide us with a veteran leader in the run game. And he could, if Eckler decides to play, be a valuable role as a power back. Granted, we do have Isaiah Spiller and Joshua Kelly backing Eckler back, so knowing Tommy T, we probably won't as well as we need to save money for our stud QB, Daddy Justin Herbert. Question two, what was better, this year's schedule release video or last year's? In my opinion, this year's was slightly better because of the showing of the greatest running back of all time, definitely no bias, LT at the end, as well as the Joey Bosa salute after the wide receivers along with the cornerbacks in, I believe, uh, an Attack on Titan reference. I can't forget the f***ing Raiders slander for the <laughs> Thursday night football week where it directs you to get a job if you select you're a Raiders fan. Classic Chargers social media team W. Anyways, that's all I got for this week. F the Raiders, f the Chiefs, f the Broncos, and Caleb, you bye. All right. Awesome. Well, awesome. And he, he just did a new Dalvin Cook um, a swap, and it's, oh, I'm really? not going to lie, looks pretty good. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, you don't usually see a guy like Dalvin Cook. Like, there's the problem. He's an older and he's got a lot of tread on the tires. But those guys don't usually just become available like that. So I don't know what the what the deal is. Yeah, for those that haven't seen Dalvin Cook, uh, there were some trade talks with him and the Vikings, and the Vikings couldn't find a trade. So they're going to, uh, they have said they're going to release him after it's June something. Yeah, uh, like to avoid that they uh, save their money. Yeah, that they'll save some money. So um, Dalvin Cook, I mean, I don't know. I, like like you said, he is an older player. Um, what I'm trying to find, when was his rookie year? He's been, I think it's like maybe his, like, I know he's on a second contract, so it's okay. got to be like year seven or eight, but he's been the Pro Bowl how many times? It's Dalvin Cook. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't know how the uncertainty of Austin makes you be like, oh, this is a great idea, but I don't know. Like, I just don't know if it's a great fit. He, he's an awesome running back. I just don't know. It's also, if you're not going to pay Austin Eckler, who we already have, that is an incredible running back, why would you pay a different veteran running back? It's I don't know. It's just it's clear that that's not our st strategy when putting together a roster is to put money into a veteran running back. Right. I, I just looked it up. So Austin Eckler and Dalvin Cook both entered the league at the same time. So I don't think, I don't know if they're necessarily the same age, but they've had the same amount of time. Uh, in the NFL, so you're, si you're six, something like that. Yeah. So I, I, I get the idea because Dalvin cook is more of Stud. a, well, he's more of a running back as opposed yeah. to Austin Eckler, yeah. who's kind of that hybrid running back wide receiver type player. So, um, I get the idea. I just don't, I mean, if we're not going to give the money to Austin Eckler, who has been a touchdown magnet the past couple of years, I don't know why. We wouldn't try to figure something out and with him. And the reason that Dalvin's Dalvin. leaving Minnesota is he wants to get paid more. He wants you more know, money. Like, yeah, it's, it's the, the same so, situation, it's the same, same exact problem, situation. Different but with a guy we don't player. know that hasn't been incredible for our team. So right, I, I don't see us jumping ship on Austin to go jump after Dalvin. A veteran running back just isn't isn't a part of our plans. Right. Yeah. It, it would be cool. 
It's exciting for fans, though, because it's like, oh, wow. Like, uh, it, it's the thing is grass is always greener. It's like, yeah. oh, wow, this is awesome. But he hasn't had the touchdown production of what Austin does. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you're pro if you're going to get him, you're probably going to get him for a one-year deal, which is what you're probably going to have with with um, – it's what you already have with Austin. You already He already has the money. The money is already allocated and ready to go for him. There's no contract you need to ne negotiate with Austin. So – I just, it'd be cool right. just for the yeah, difference, exactly. for the change of pace, but I don't know if it necessarily does a whole lot for us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, was this year's schedule release better or last year's? What do you think? They're both good. They were both good. I guess this one was more recent, so I'll go with this, this one. <laughs> <laughs> the last, but, but the thing about last year's one is it was so shocking because it was such a new thing yeah. that had never That's been seen before. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 They caught us. I got caught off guard this this one, but the last one was like, holy shit, we went next level and it like broke the internet for a little bit. I, yeah. You, you got to go with the, you know, you got to go with Rocky. You got to go with the first Back to the Future. You got to go with the first <laughs> of everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got, I go with the the original. Yeah. I, I would say the first one too. I kind of like the song a little bit better. Both. Both songs I thought were fantastic choices. I, I like the first one just a little bit more. It got me a little bit more pumped up. Uh, and yeah, it, it's it's the OG. It, it is the one that caught you off guard. This one caught us off guard because we didn't think they would do the same thing twice. Right. So I mean, it caught us off guard in that in that regard. But otherwise, it was like, oh, okay, this is, we're doing the same thing. We're we're taking yeah. jabs at other teams, which this, is fantastic. It's not put a on bad this thing. warm blanket. We yeah. know what this is. Let's oh, enjoy. It. Yeah. Let's. In, in fact, let's share it with the world. Why don't we? Yeah. And let everybody know how much we want to put the screws to them. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would say the the OG one uh, for me there, Swipa. But uh, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kea. Oh, oh shit! Who Aww. asked the question? Oh my gosh! Hey, Charger Chat. And it's been such a long time since we last spoke, and I've totes been wondering what you've been up to these days. I just have to ask an off season question before some Chargers football. Our beloved Justin Herbert, and my boyfriend, by the way, has been in a few commercials here and there, but I was wondering what you guys would want to see him in. Who should he sponsor in a commercial, and why should it be head and shoulders? <laughs> all jokes aside, I love you all. FTR, I can't love you. Bye. I want him to steal absolutely every single one of Mahomes' sponsors. <laughs> yeah. So State, State Farm, Farm. Any yes. of the any of the any of the any of the commercials that require Mahomes to act, he should be fucking fired <laughs> right now because he yeah. sucks. Put yeah. Justin in. Yeah. That's what I want. So Agreed. pretty much all of his all of Mahomes' his portfolio, um, get rid of it and give it to Justin. Let's just move like that over to Justin. Investment portfolio. Yeah. yeah, just give it to him. <laughs> Easy. Agreed. Answer. Perfect answer. Yeah, I, I mean, you could go with all the barbecue or fishing or, you know, outdoorsy things that he's been known to do and, and toss him in there. But taking, you know, what Patrick Mahomes has is always a, a beautiful thing. Wins the Super Bowl and then he becomes the spokesperson for State Farm. That would just be so good. That would be fucking awesome. It would be. Because, yeah, I mean, we saw that with Aaron Rodgers. He was the original. Well, I don't know if he was the original, but he was the one that had it before Patrick. Just can't double check. Patrick just started can't weaseling check. his way in there, and I think it's time for Justin to shine and you know, steal you know, some be, commercial time. It'd be good for Justin is uh, the Bose, Bose, like the noise-canceling headphones. Oh, yeah. Because uh, all that shit people are throwing at Justin. Just put those on, baby. Are you listening, Bose? Yeah. There, there's opportunity <laughs> here, okay? Yeah. I'm here to help. I have ideas. <laughs> and yeah, the head and shoulders, absolutely. You get him and Mahomes and Palomalu and hell, even throw Tyler Lawrence in there. That's fine. Hell yeah. His name's Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence <laughs> Not yeah. Tyler. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. I like Tyler Lawrence yeah, better. Screw that I, I've already forgotten his name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about? All right. Kaya, thank you for asking the question. Let's move Thanks, it on now Kaya. to Rebolted2006. Who asked the question? I just want to say something to all the Charger fans listening. After the Charger schedule release, you could do anything. Anything is possible. <laughs> the world is yours. There are no limits. You can literally brisket broads make a beeline to Justin Herbert during pregame warmups on the field with their book during the season opener against Miami to get his autograph and no one will stop you. Kids of Charger fans ages 8 to 12, listen to me. 
You could turn yourself into a football and have your friend throw you into the end zone. And I promise Keenan or Mike will catch you. Screw all the negativity, Chargers fans. You can climb to the top of SoFi Stadium after we clinch the division against the Chiefs at the season finale. And if you believe, you could jump off and I promise you, you will turn into a lightning cloud. Oh my God. Apology to all the Chargers fans, all the fans that uh, may try any of the above and experience loss, physical injury, or prison time. My statements were irresponsibly positive, and I have looked up healthy ways moving forward to practice my positivity post-release of any Chargers content. <laughs> now for the question. Way too early training camp question, but which uh, position battle are you most looking forward to after the draft from the following? RB 1 and 2 between X, Spiller, and Kelly. Cornerback two slash slot between Asante, Vato, and Jasir. Wide receiver three, QJ and Palmer. Double D, kicker battle, Dustin and Dicker. Safety, JT Woods and Alohi. Any position battle not listed above you think we should be watching out for? K, love you, bye. So the battles, what are we most excited or looking forward to the most? Go call. Uh, yeah, I think the running back one to me is the most intriguing with all the drama behind Eck. Because like in my head, it was always like, well, we'll always have Eckler and then we just need somebody to scrape by. Right. But now it's like looking towards the future of after this year, do we have the guy on our, our roster right now? And I, mm-hmm. Isaiah Spiller to me is still really, really exciting. He was so young last year and he just wasn't ready to play NFL football yet. Um. But yeah, to me, I think that the cornerback one, I don't know. I, I think it's, if if JC's back, you have JC, Zon, and Vato, and there's some rotation there. Um, wide receiver three, that's not really a thing. All those guys are going to play. You're going to get, yeah. Qu- Quentin Johnson's going to play. Palmer's going to play. You know, like they're all going to be on the field and it doesn't really matter who's the quote unquote number three. Now we have a lot of freedom to roll guys in and out a lot so mm-hmm. um yeah to me the running back position is the most exciting uh battle mm-hmm. it's funny with great minds think alike because i was just gonna say the backup running back battle is the one i'm interested in the most and see who's gonna you know because kelly had shown flashes last year when he he just never got enough re- reps in my opinion to get into a rhythm to really do a whole lot so you're going to be dealing with that again between Spiller and and Kelly. You just got to see who can step up the quickest and and be the most efficient with the limited amount they have. And then hopefully that grows into something a little more. Right. And now with Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator, how are these guys going to be utilized? I mean, we saw uh, Tony Pollard in, in Dallas getting... He's the one now that's got the, the bag backup and, became he, the number one. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, you're onto something. I think there's definitely something to be said for Eckler not even being near the amount of production he had last year. Yeah, um, just it's just he's not going to be on the field. He's not a three down back, which he never was. And I think they're going to actually mm-hmm. utilize him in a way that you know plays with strengths a little bit. So I think that's exactly why Eckler wanted to get a contract and get on because I don't he's not going to be in the same role he's been in the last two years. Yeah. All right. Well, rebolted 2006. There you go. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to the salty cook and shout out to Zachary Shelton. You guys were kind of in the same ballpark, but I'm going with the salty cook on this one. Feel certified fresh. Yeah. You can't be certain. Internet's Feels. not great. What's up, Charger chat? Just wanted to say thank you guys for always brightening up my work day with the pot. I'm a former San Diegan living in Raleigh, North Carolina. And unfortunately, I haven't met too many Charger fans out here. So thanks for being my emotional support family. One cannot bear the stresses of a Charger season alone. That being said, which road games are you all planning on attending this season? I'd like to visit Nashville myself, and I would love to meet up with some other Charger fans. Thanks again, fellas. K, love you, boy. Oh, and one more thing. Bolt the F up and f*** those down low, dirty, good for nothing, makeup wearing, insane clown posse wannabe, Walmart trash, Kardashian, thumb sucking, bitch ass <laughs> raiders. <coughs> good. That was a I good like one. 
I a like it. Salt to cook. Got me right here. <laughs> uh, all right. Road games. I know we were talking about home games earlier, but what are we thinking about for the rude? I want, I want the Packers. It's it, all these, the schedule seems to fall all within these little, like little windows where I have like a day or two off with work. So it is going to be, if it happens, it's going to be a in out deal. Um, but, uh, um, I want to take, uh, take my wife hopefully to that one and meet up with other charger fans at the Packer game. But that would be cool. Uh, we just honestly, like when this came out, I haven't, we haven't had time to like get together as a pod and figure out what we want to do, Yeah, but we do want to do as much as we can. So we're, we're going to have a, uh, uh, you know, a board meeting here at some point yes. and try to figure it out. A board meeting will commence. For all of the home and away games that we will plan on attending. And again, we like to try to go to as many as we possibly can. Uh, but yeah, Kevin definitely going to the Green Bay game by the sound I'd of it. I'd say it's going to, the wife is going to be the deciding factor on that. So I feel 100. Not sure what the wife's percentage is, but you know, could level you out a little bit. Yeah. Well, we'll see. If I start getting in trouble and she's like, you know, not that into it, I might have to give you guys her uh, handles so you can sh- drop in the DM and be like, "Hey, it'd be cool if you come went on Kev's that game. That's the play, Kev. I don't know if that's the play. <laughs> <laughs> I would avoid that strategy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's a bold strategy. It's hey, not, I don't desperate know. Desperate times I'm call out. for desperate measures, man. I'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> All right. Well, Salty Cook and Zachary Shelton, thank you guys for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Niners, who asked the question. Hmm. What's the Chargers' biggest weakness on the team? What injury will cause the biggest issue for the team? It's hard to say right now because it seems like everybody's getting slightly healthier um, and people are on the field and there's not, you know, it's so early to like be concerned about. I think the depth is one. This is one of the better teams we've had in a long time in terms of depth across the board. Right. So it's really going to be a matter of who, what position group gets banged up the most. So, right. Yeah. It, uh, and he, I guess like, where's the least amount of depth is the question. If, yeah. if one guy gets hurt, how, if Derwin James gets hurt, we're in some deep, deep doo doo as far as safety goes. So um, safety. That, that's put, that puts you with JT Woods and Alohi Gilman as your two starting safety. And we're not really that confident in either one of them. So um, yeah, to me that up high safety is kind of the most worrisome position right now. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And uh, what injury will cause, let's not put some bad juju on this team there, Niners. I'm not calling injuries. (laughs) I'm calling wins over here. I'm calling 17 of them, 17 of them, baby. So (laughs) And that last that last question is pretty self explanatory. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to put that out there because not needed. So but you can use your imagination on what that'll be. What what that would be? Okay, <laughs> there we go. Niners, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to a Thier Kadir, who asked the question. Wool dog, my brother, my favorite. Love you, my guy. So I have a question. I'm really mad at Charger fans. They keep saying our team can't win the West from the Chiefs, baby. My question is easy. Why are we playing the games? Let's forfeit. Let me hear the guys. Love your FTR number 10 MVP, Bolts 23, baby. Well, Thier, um, I'm glad you uh, enjoy uh, Wooldog so much. But, uh, there yeah, are two Wooldog, why don't you answer questions? the question? Yeah, it sounds like a everybody's got to be somebody's favorite, and you know what? I'm a Thier, so let's just uh, <laughs> come to terms with it and uh, move on. And uh, um, shut the. F- <laughs> I bet you think this pod is about you, don't you? Um. All right. Yeah. I. I think what a Thier's trying to say is okay. Well, <laughs> I guess if we can't win, we should just forfeit, right? Is that what everybody thinks we should do? It's like, no, of course not. We're gonna play our hardest because there is a chance that we can win and we have beat the chiefs in the past when it was a Patrick Mahomes led team and they had Tyree kill and all those other guys like it can happen. And and the one thing that I can recall from the previous chiefs games was them interviewing Andy Reid and Andy Reid going like, yeah, we saw them call these plays last year and we knew exactly what they were going to do. And that was when Joe Lombardi was the offensive coordinator. Now that you got Kellen Moore, as the offensive coordinator, they can look at Dallas and try to figure out what he might do when he was playing at Dallas, but he's got a totally different team over here with totally different set of skills. And I think if there's ever a time for the Chargers to beat the Chiefs, it's this year. 
catch them this off guard. Is catch them off guard, throw something at them that they haven't seen yet, and try to out coach Andy Reid because that's been the problem. It's not been the players' abilities, it's been the play calls, it's been the coaching where you get out coached in those games. And so now we've got a different guy calling the plays, and I'm excited to see what could happen. And I think this could be the year. So, yeah, for those that think that we can't beat the Chiefs, just hold Shut on. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Don't, Don't be j- stupid. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> Zip Don't it. Stupid. <laughs> we're, we're, we give them the... I, I hang out with Chiefs fan. He's a great guy. Brian Adams. Shout him out on the podcast. He's a great guy. <laughs> Don't he's talk a Chiefs, to him. <laughs> he's a Chiefs fan. Um, there's a Brian Adams spelled the same way as the awesome singer. But you, you I'm giving him it. more info. <laughs> yeah, there's so many Brian Adams. His Instagram handle and his Twitter handle. No, is. I'm not going to. I'm not going to blow him up. He's a great guy, though. He'd have a great football conversation with you. But he says, we've had him on before, haven't we? Yeah, like a long time ago. I think we might have to yeah. bring him back. He's fun. Um, but he says <laughs> the big the team that he is always the most concerned about every year is us. We yeah. always take him to the end. It's always you never quite know what's going to happen. We're always a pain in their ass. Right. So we just need to learn how to win those games. Let's right. be a pain in the ass, but then close it out. What happened that first game last year? Interception, at, you know, at, in the end zone, essentially, 99-yard touchdown. That's the only reason the Chiefs won that game. Right. So learn how to close the shit out. Learn how to beat the Chiefs right. is, is important because we have what it takes to compete with them. We just need, need to beat them now. Right. Keep the major mistakes to a minimum, and I think yes. we can make that happen. So. Athir, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Warzone 1904. Certified fresh. Who asked the question? If JC Jackson is unable to come back 100%, could we try him at free safety? Have him playing the deep middle a la Earl Thomas? DJ is Bam Bam, Vato is Sherm, and ASJ is on the opposite side? All right. Well, I. what do you think, Kyle? I think he's referencing the Legion of Boom when it was the Seahawks and Earl Thomas and uh, Sherman and all those guys. So is is that something that's feasible to have him move over to free safety? Uh, I mean, I don't know. If he's not healthy enough to play corner, I don't know why he's healthy enough. It's not as if safeties are unathletic, slow, yeah. unable to cut and plant kind of guy. Total so. cake position. Anybody could, I could do it. <laughs> and and yeah. isn't that a harder position in terms of scheme and being in the right place? You have so much more to look at. Yeah. Well, hundred percent. Yeah. It's a, it's a completely different position as far as learning it. And we saw JC Jackson having year. a lot of trouble just even out the outside. So yeah. um, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be the play. I think if you, he's a corner and if he can't play corner, I think, um, I, I don't know really know what the options are because we paid him a good jillion dollars and he's only in the second year of his deal. But it, from what we see, I don't see why you wouldn't think that he's going to come back 100%. He's already progressed so fast. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to sit here and believe that he's going to be 100% and be our outside corner. Um, but, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't see him making a change at this point in his career. And if he's not healthy to play corner, I don't see him being healthy enough to play safety. Excellent. Yeah. And I think the big thing was the last year when, you know, they were, they, he got benched for a moment because he was just in the wrong place. He wasn't, he wasn't in the right position. You know, he was totally wasn't blown just, coverage. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. men, mental errors. So I want him to stay focused on that one position, get really good at it to the point where he can start playing free and do all the interceptions that he had in New England for us. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that if you're thinking about what, what you're, keep where you're supposed simple, to be or what stupid. you're doing. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Warzone 1904. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Arnie Gordon, Arnie. who asked the question. With QJ drafted, Guyton re-signed, Palmer looking good, and Herbert's contract on the horizon, can you see a path that keeps Allen counting $40 million against the cap in 24? Or is this the end on Telesco's cap magic? 40 million gonna, for Keenan Allen. You're going to have to. I don't know how you do that. I, I don't know. You're, you're going to have next year's going to be tough because you're going to lose one of our names that we're used to having forever. Um, it's just the reality with how much money is going to have to go, unless it's kind of one of those team friendly deals that Mahomes did where he got paid like <coughs> signing bonus and like $3 million for the first two years. Right. So it'll, it'll just, I don't know how the accounting works. I don't want to. Keenan to go play for any other team besides us. No, he's still at the level he was. You know, it might a little bit of fall off, but he's still better at running routes than anyone in the league, in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I hope they can make something work. 
I do think with drafting receiver in the first round, having the guys, the depth that we have at wide receiver, it feels inevitable with that restructure that Keenan Allen's not going to be a charger next year. That's just what it, that's just what it feels like. And again, I don't know all the accounting works, but um, I don't know. It feels like they drafted Josh Palmer knowing that Keenan Allen was coming up on a, cause he's, everyone has said he's kind of that similar type of route running and plays that a very similar position. And now you got a bit, another big tall guy on the outside for the eventual Mike Williams departure. It, it just seems like they're a couple years ahead of every wide receiver contract coming due. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. I, I definitely don't want to. What? What? Do you, I can't think of the, how long a, a wide receiver usually plays for. I mean, Keenan Allen. I think his rookie year was twenty thirteen. So yeah, yeah, this 10. is his ten ten years at, or ten or eleven this year. Yeah, in his, it's the twilight. It, you know, you don't have guys going. You don't in play a fifteen position like years and at no. the wide receiver position. Quarterbacks yeah. do because they're not required they to be top speed and all that stuff. You mm-hmm. know, so it's. It's it's a scary reality. So let's just enjoy the season to the fullest and 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 see what happens next year. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, there you go, Arnie Gordon. Thank you for asking the question. Uh, let's move it on now to XX Kevon, who asked the question. <laughs> yeah, I'm back again. I know it's early, but give me your stats for the team. Herbert's passing yards. How many yards do you think Allen and the other receivers get? Oh, sacks and interceptions for the defense. And how do you think the playoff bracket will pan out? <laughs> <laughs> you want it all. Jeez, I want it now. <laughs> you want the playoff bracket. And you know what? Fuck it. Who are we drafting next year? <laughs> this, this is, is a good question. Ball of wax. This is it's a just, good question. It just but kept fuck. going. And every time you asked the question, I was like, okay, maybe I. I have my answer for that and then you guys know that I'm like I don't I don't know and then I another way like, what about the lottery God. numbers what do you think <laughs> what are you feeling uh, uh we're not taking we're not taking the piss but that's just really funny it is yeah. funny um, yeah. we're um, we're not known for looking too deep into the future as far as uh, I love that question so much it's a great yeah. question it, it is very compact but there's so much in it I know but, when you look at it on the outline it looks like a short question it definitely so does this might lot. be the longest yeah. answered question this we, is a we, mighty we mouse kind of question well let's hit yeah. it one at a time Herbert's passing <laughs> yards what are we predicting 6,000 easily I'm gonna go 5850 <laughs> Ooh, 5850. 5850. And then I think our three top three wide receivers all are 1,000 yards this year. Oh, that'd be sick. 3,000 yard receivers. um, And our tight ends and running backs will make up the other 3,000 something yards. (laughs) 2,000 something yards. 850, whatever you said, 585. Nice. So, nice. yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, if we can get to 6,000, <laughs> I think I have to get a Justin Herbert tattoo. So I'll just put that out there right now. I mean, with Kellen Moore, we the have offense too many coordinator. Empty promises. Stop throwing stuff out there. I feel confident always, that that no, one. We, I'll get a many, 10 somewhere. I'll do a 10. I'll no, do a small 10 somewhere. You will not. I, I will. I know for a fact you won't. <laughs> you won't. Stop making empty promises to our listeners. Because I did it last week. I did it two weeks ago. My my son's name will not be Max Duggan. So we need to stop throwing out these ridiculous promises. If he gets six thousand passing yards, that is something to celebrate. With you're not going to get a tattoo. His skin. You're, you're telling you're me your out. first. Your this first is so, tattoo. Okay, guys, just in case you want to know how our family out. works and how Kyle and I work, he will challenge me on something like this and really force me to double down. One, he forced me to double down to become like a golfer, which now all I can think about is how to get better at that. And now he's challenged me to this. So if he gets six thousand yards, you won't. You won't see. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. He's getting me mad. I almost like it. You for sure won't. You've been building up this he's first getting tattoo me so bad, I almost for like a it. decade. You're like, oh, I just gotta find the right one. I just gotta find the right one. You're telling me the right one is the number ten. <laughs> That's what you waited for. I wish there was a delay. The internet got good. All of a sudden, this internet got really good, and I hear everything you're saying. <laughs> So good. Thanks, um, Romania. All right. Uh, how about sacks and interceptions or the defense? More than last year. <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> Fucking wild. <laughs> wild <laughs> prediction. More uh, than last year. I love it. And then uh, playoff break. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we do an AFC and an NFC. Uh, he he yeah. wants it all. He Let me get my whiteboard. We'll, we'll all right. Well, why don't we take a second? Toss up our bracket on here, Adam. What? <laughs> You just added an hour we'll come of work up with to that, Adam. We'll come that up with a bracket. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, should hey, we just wh- say Chargers AFC West champs? Hey, number what, one. Seed, you know what's cool about by. brackets is how they finish. Chargers win the Super Bowl, my friend. <laughs> oh God, done. Oh, that was that covers both funny. sides. <laughs> bracket that covers bracket. both sides. Bracket Chargers at the top. All right. Yep. <laughs> uh, dude, we might have dove into this if you wouldn't have caught me waking up. Adam needed to go to bed. I apologize. That's all tough, good. Tough landing spot. Uh, uh, XX, I love it. Come on. It was funony. XX Kevon. You made us laugh, dude. Thank you. And now I'm really mad at my brother. You may have forced me to get a tattoo. <laughs> this is great. Uh, thank you for asking the question. Let's get out of this. Ask Bolt Fam with Boltville 714. Who asked the question? Mmm, hey there, Chanter Chant boys. Welcome back to your favorite station. That's right, this is 69.9 XFM, the Thunder f***. Mmm, <laughs> how hot was it to watch the training camp videos today? Did it make you want to bolt the f*** up? <laughs> and those throws from Justin to Q, were they not just the perfect material to make you want to make filthy, sweaty love to yourself? God. Do you think Justin was nice and gentle to Q, or do you think Justin welcomed him to the NFL by giving him his seeds raw and hard right Jesus. to the chest? Jesus. All righty, Bull fam. We have three lucky callers on the hotline today, Wooldog, Coach, and Kevin, and we got a steamy question for them. Let's see what they answer. Imagine the three of you are stranded, wet out, and out in the freezing cold, wearing nothing but a Jacksonville Jag Speedo. You run into Herbert, who just lost his first playoff game, and he has a lot of pent-up anger and frustration, if you know what I'm saying. You take, oh you must take Justin's seeds until he's pleased in order oh to get God. him to help you return home. <laughs> oh Are you God. taking it in the face? Your lower what? back or your chest. No hands, of course, and you can't give the same answer. Well, that's it for us, folks. Shout out to the Challenger social media team for the anime banger of a schedule release video. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Next up, we got the number one Billboard hit song, Dicker or Kicker by FTR and K Love You Bye. This may be the dirtiest question we've ever received on this podcast. I think or I'm just, my brains went there. He's talking about footballs, Kevin. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's my brain. I blame <laughs> my brain. made it sound dirty. How, but I've never heard of a football referred to as a seed. It looks like a seed. It's like a seed shaped. It just I got well, so sexy Herbert for me. Herbert was I don't not know. throwing seeds at Q during training camp. He was throwing a football. So this is us standing out in the wet cold nothing but a speedo and herbert's gonna unleash gotta, he needs to just throw I think some this, footballs he's gotta throw some footballs and unload okay. this, this question <laughs> said, this says a lot about my mental state right now of being gone for so long and where my head's at so All my right, apologies so i take it back balls to, to the face lower back or chest i don't want him to get they'll see the lower back is the one that's like what how does it that's kidney territory. I mean, that's like when you get punched I'm going in the kidneys. Chest. I'm, I'm thinking like Billy Madison when he or Happy Gilmore when he takes his he takes he goes into the pitching machine. He just <laughs> 364 yeah. Yeah. more days till next hockey season. Yeah, I'll go chest. Sorry guys, you can't pick it. I I well I'll I don't take... want that. Your heart could stop. That's not good. <laughs> that's not you good, Kyle. Face? You should see a doctor about that. No, okay. um, I'm the big lower back. I'll, guy. I'll take the face. <laughs> I'll take, the, I'll take the lower back. Yeah. I'm I'll a lower take the back face guy. No, with the hopes pick, that like you don't get to pick the lower back. We're giving you the lower back. <laughs> You're gonna take it. <laughs> I'll take some seeds, boys. I, <laughs> I'm hoping this beard can like cushion some of the blow. And you're getting knocked out, dude. You're getting <laughs> tough. You're bleeding. From That's your what nose I'm hoping for. Maybe you're, one just hits me just right, and I'm just down. And then it's like, I all just right. what I picture is you having like you getting hit in the face, and you having a lisp for the rest of these asshole <laughs> things. Yep. It's just a permanent lisp. Yeah, like cable guy. <laughs> he knocked a lisp into your face. Yeah, your <laughs> mouth's gonna get wired shut, and you're eating, drinking smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, <laughs> Bolt that's a sexy, prefer- that's a sexy radio station. I just want to say yeah. that's a sexy radio station you got there, Boltville. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Seeds, the new football, folks. Uh, <laughs> Boltville seven one four. Thank you for asking the question, and thank you everybody for asking questions and ask Bolt fam. We greatly appreciate it. And I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Any final delayed thoughts there, gentlemen? (laughs) 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 He he got me with that one. That was funny. funny. I'm hoping my internet is better in Poland. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Heading there. So everyone knows the <sighs> Wi-Fi in Poland. <laughs> That's we'll what they're see. known for. It's on their flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a modem. Just a modem. <laughs> oh, oh my God. All right. I'm sweating. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. <laughs> Caleb, <you> bye. <laughs> nice delay. Caleb, <laughs> bye. Hey, love you, bye. Bye. And now. A word from our sponsors. Every day, Telecom Romania is making it easier for people to live, work, and play. Call now for Telecom Romania, a new way to use your computer to communicate, have fun, and get instant news and information at blazing speeds of up to 15 kilobytes a second. Huawei! Call now for your free startup kit and get free software and 10 free hours online. It's everything you need to get online. Call now for your free Telecom Romania startup kit with free software and 10 free hours. It's everything you need to get online. Un Chorobeza.